The scandal surrounding Sydney's star casino has deepened to embroil New South Wales Premier Barry O'Farrell in potentially the most damaging political controversy his government has faced. After weeks of allegations of sexual harassment, lax regulation and political skullduggery, public hearings began today into the goings-on at Star. Central to the inquiry is a former advisor to the Premier accused of running a vendetta against the casino. Now it's the Premier himself who faces accusations of setting out to quote evidence at today's hearing to smash star. Deborah Cornwall reports. When American gaming bosses took on management of Sydney's Star Casino three years ago, they were hailed as saviors. Their stated mission a billion dollar makeover that would transform the star from the frumpy poor cousin of Melbourne's glamorous Crown Casino and quote, put the Viagra back into Sydney's nightlife. From the moment they walked in the door, we were seeing a completely different casino. It was, uh, you know, we want it to be a nightclub. We want 20 year olds in here. We want short dresses, big breasts, lots of pussy, um, podium dancers. Uh, you know, um, sporting stars. It's a formula the American gaming team had used before in Atlantic City at the Borgata Casino, where buxom female staffers, the Borgata Babes, took customer service to a whole new level. But the new regime, ushered in by bosses Larry Mullen and Sid Vacunta, proved more than a culture shock for many casino staffers. I think that uh, they came in thinking that we were the school mums. You know, here we are, we've got a bunch of rules, and they were saying, forget the rules, we'll take care of that, don't worry about it. Um, they thought we were the ugly, Country town, Hicks, uh, we've got a bunch of ugly people working for us. In a recent review of the Star's licence, former casino managers Elizabeth Ward and Greg Culpin were part of a group of staffers who turned whistleblower. They told the review there was pressure by some in management to go easy on enforcing gaming regulations, especially with the high rollers. You have a group of people that are there just to do the spin, it might be something that's quite bad, and by the time it gets to the regulators, it's been filtered and filtered and filtered so much that by the time it gets up there, there's no, um, there's no cause for alarm. It's just a storm in a teacup. The review heard those who resisted management orders to under-report gaming breaches, like disputes over winnings, were threatened with demotion and in some cases sacked. Well, you don't report things that happen because if you do, it has a negative impact on your pay. What do you do? You don't report it. When the New South Wales Casino Authority renewed the Star's licence last December, it did flag some serious concerns about the Star's culture of under-reporting. One of the more urgent recommendations of the review was that the Star really needed to step up its involvement with police and criminal agencies. Since July 2010, for example, not one criminal check had been conducted by police on the casino's high rollers, despite the fact many of them were well-known crime figures. It, it absolutely astounded me that 10 of the targets, the top 10 targets of the New South Wales Asian Crime Unit were not only in the casino, but were in the high rollers room. It was just two months after the review all hell broke loose. Sydney's Star Casino will come under fresh scrutiny by the New South Wales Casino Authority. The Star's managing director, Sid Vacunta, was sacked over claims he'd sexually harassed two casino staffers, one of them the girlfriend of Premier Barry O'Farrell's media chief, Peter Grimshaw. Mr Vacunta denied the allegations. The Star retaliated by going into open warfare with the government. The casino operators accuse Peter Grimshaw of using his position to try and trash the star's reputation, a claim they backed up by leaking phone texts and emails to the media in which Mr Grimshaw and his girlfriend referred to Sid Vakunta as Mr Nasty and talked about how to get rid of him. Me, 
I hope you get rid of Mr Nasty. I hate this place. Please fix. Oh, I am. Say goodbye to Mr Nasty. All they need is a sexual harassment scandal. Exactly. You know, I, I am worried. We are worried. Of course, that there may be things that have happened that either we didn't know about or didn't know about in time. Such has been the fallout from the scandal. The New South Wales Casino Authority launched a second inquiry and today took the unprecedented step uh, of opening the hearings to the public. The inquiry has formed the opinion and is satisfied that, is in the public, that it is in the public interest that an, that an account of how the Star and Echo responded uh, to the allegations against uh, Mr Vaikunta be given in public. Mr Grimshaw, who's been stood aside by Premier Barry O'Farrell pending the inquiry, was the first in the witness box today. Grilled by counsel assisting, Mr Grimshaw admitted Mr Vakunta had been his boss at the Star before he worked for the Premier, but he denied he'd been waging a vendetta against him. Yes, as I said before, I didn't think Mr Vakunta was a suitable person to run the casino. But just minutes before the inquiry wrapped for the day, Star's lawyers dropped a bombshell producing a series of sensational new emails between Grimshaw and his girlfriend. The text messages have dropped Premier Barry O'Farrell right in it, implicating him in a covert campaign against the star. In August 2010, Grimshaw texted his girlfriend, I just told Barry what a dick Sid is. He said it might be time to give the star a wake-up call. Three months later, he sent another message Barry just texted me, I think he's going to smash the star. His girlfriend replied, I'm so proud of you, let's go to town on star. Clearly under pressure, Mr Grimshaw was adamant he had no memory of ever sending the texts. But while Mr Grimshaw's role in the scandal has damaged the O'Farrell government, it's hardly been a win for the star or their owners, Echo Entertainment. You got some big hitters amongst um, Echo Entertainment and the executives of the Star City Casino who will get down and get dirty if necessary. But I can't help think that they have actually created a monster. I think what they've done with this sex harassment case has actually brought bigger focus on the casino itself. So I think they have shot themselves in the foot. Deborah Cornwall with that report.